We are state of the art. We have advanced technology here. This material recovery facility is the largest of its kind in the country, quite possibly in the world. A city of 8.8 million people creates a whole lot of garbage. But what many might conveniently forget is more than half of this trash is recyclable. The infrastructure is state of the art. The problem, New Yorkers aren't so good at. We only capture about 50% of the recyclables that are actually in the waste. 50% of our recyclables are still being thrown in the trash. And while some residents go beyond separating their bottles and paper bags, others recycle to survive. This system has the capacity to handle much more. And mayor after mayor has promised to get serious about recycling, about but the city has mostly been stagnant. Here's an inside look at one of the biggest recycling systems in the U.S. This facility in Brooklyn is where empty bottles and cans go for a second chance at life. This is our tipping floor. This is where we receive materials on trucks and barges. And this is the stuff we sort. Usually on this floor we'll have less than half a day of New York City's recyclables, so a, a few hundred tons of metal glass plastic. Sims Municipal Recyclings and Sorting and Packaging New York's metal, glass, and plastic for almost a decade now. First step, the Liberator rips open the plastic recycling bags so we can actually sort the contents. Then everything passes into this room. So once materials are pushed from that big pile into the sorting system, the process really begins. Materials here are split into two identical streams. They exist, so if one side breaks down or has a jam, we can keep running on the other side. These orange boxes, those are optical sorters. They use near-infrared light to identify the chemical makeup of materials that pass by underneath. So when it finds what it's programmed to look for, it cues an air jet at the end of the conveyor belt that pushes that material over a barrier onto another conveyor. So that's how we sort the different types of plastic. That's how we sort the paper and plastic film that we are not supposed to receive but do. Once the materials are sorted, they make their way to a bunker. When the bunker fills up, it's emptied and makes its way to its final destination. Now it's headed to the baler where we will compress it. We are running 24 hours a day, six days a week. Three shifts a day, sorting about 1,000 tons a day. The city produces about 14 million tons of trash annually, and managing all that, it's tough. Recycling hasn't always been required by law. For years, New Yorkers would dump garbage in the ocean. The city tossed trash in the streets. Pigs even once roamed Manhattan, eating up our discarded scraps. But the prevailing method has been to ship it off, burn it, or dump it in a landfill like Fresh Kills on Staten Island. That was until New Yorkers' attitudes towards the environment and the smell created a change. In the 1970s, the original Earth Day, 1970, was a protest movement that spawned the modern recycling movement. So we had marches in New York City, etc. And that really started this grassroots effort to figure out how do we create reuse and how do we create recycling for the, the things that we would be throwing away. 
Fast forward to 1989, we passed a mandatory recycling law in New York City, Local Law 19. It required New York City residents to recycle certain parts of the waste stream. Despite laws in place, the city has had trouble meeting its recycling goals. Only a few smaller facilities and programs were processing the items. Many administrators did not enforce it, and funding was cut, all leading to public confusion and a decline in curbside recycling. Even still, New York City operates one of the largest curbside recycling programs in the U.S. Every day right now, our trucks pick up about 10,000 tons of refuse and about 2,000 tons of recyclables. After decades of progress, most New Yorkers are familiar with the blue and green bins. However, a third bin will be just as familiar to catch the city up with the current waste reduction tactic du jour. Meet the brown bin. So while recyclables, metal, glass, plastic, cartons, paper, and cardboard make up one third, roughly, of everything we throw out in New York City, compostables, food scraps, food soiled paper, yard waste, makes up another third of everything we throw away. So today we have an organic compost route and we're just grabbing the pails on the addresses that's on our sheet. We just grab each individual one and we just keep on going. So we just have this all the way down to Henry and then from there we'll be, we'll be turning. Pardon me? <laughs> on a typical route, each Department of Sanitation truck will collect between 200 and 250 bins of scraps. Trucks transport the compost to processing facilities throughout the city, like this one on Staten Island. So the facility itself, in terms of overall organics, we're permitted for 105,000 uh, cubic yards a year. And in terms of food waste, we are permitted for 1,560 wet tons per year. This stand specifically is for any food organics that come in, so either residential or for schools. Right now, you're seeing the school waste. So what happens is that the sanitation truck will back up, dump the material. The piles are then manually sorted. Despite many efforts to convince residents that recycling is the right choice, many still find it a cumbersome task. Last full year, we recycled over 680,000 tons of material. And that's 50% of the recyclables that we know people throw away. So we know there's well over a million tons of recyclables that we could be capturing um, in New York City. New York is one of only a few cities that pays for trash collection out of its tax revenue. Only property owners pay a small fee if it is improperly sorted. And in a city of mostly renters, this isn't an incentive. With all these hurdles, New York is searching to improve these numbers. One solution that proved effective was the bottle bill. Well, we're at Sure We Can, which is New York City's only nonprofit redemption center. That means we're the only organization in the city that's dedicated to serving canners, who are the people who collect and redeem bottles and cans in order to earn income. We were founded in 2007 by a group of canners who were experiencing homelessness at the time and they really suffered the difficulties of canning lifestyle. In addition, there was all the stigma associated with life on the street that uh, canners would experience too, racism, classism, misogyny. Many canners experience disabilities that again make it harder for them to do conventional work. A law passed in 1982 known as the Bottle Bill placed a five cent fee on many single use containers. This deposit is charged to the customers who can get their money back if they return the bottles. Because most people here in New York don't do that, but there's still a value to the material from the deposit, uh, from the law, it's created this uh, sector of work for informal workers who collect those materials and redeem them to earn income. Todos los días estoy aquí porque yo reciclo todos los reciclo y así como reciclo traigo, guardo y para trabajar. Trabajarlo durante la semana. Sí, yo reciclo viernes, sábado y domingo. 
para... Y vengo guardo y guardo para poder trabajar, clasificar. Trabajo clasificando, no entrego así todo, clasifico. What makes us unique is that we, in addition to offering redemption service, which we do, we re directly redeem the bottles and cans and pay out cash to canners. We also offer supportive services in terms of working space. We offer storage space. And we also run outreach and advocacy programs designed around building and strengthening community among canners. New York is a city that prides itself on sustainability. But when it comes to separating out the trash, it still has a long way to go. Everybody generates waste. When we throw something away, we're throwing away not only that product, but everything that went into making that product. So the embedded energy, the embedded mining, the embedded transportation. So our goal is to keep those resources that we spend all the money, the time, the energy to produce in circulation as much as we can. There is a way to get to zero waste. It's just about scaling it and then increasing participation rates. Recycling has gained popularity over the last two decades as people become more environmentally conscious. But it also pays to recycle. There's enough waste for everyone to get their peace and to everyone to contribute to making the city better. I think that really has to be the focus. If we're just talking about the profit that's earned from this material, we're not going to find our way to actual solutions for sustainable societies. But money always factors in. During past budget crises, recycling usually found itself on the chopping block. Nonetheless, various administrators have promised to make waste diversion a priority. And it's gotten better, even by just a few percentage points. 15% in 2011 versus 18% of total waste in 2021. It will cost money. It's not a free program. So, you know, it's really about the investment and how do we make it as efficient as possible. One of the biggest challenges with composting is just behavior change and perception. So the idea that, oh, it's going to smell. The odor and the ick factor is real. The city's independent budget office estimates that if mandated, composting could save the city $33 million annually after the first five years. But getting there would require more trucks and expanded routes all adding to the already congested streets, and it will likely span multiple administrations, all with their own priorities and challenges. But it's also the job of the people. The three R words in order of importance are reduce, reuse, and recycle. Recycle is third on that list. It is important, but it is not in itself a solution. So we should all be reducing first. We should just be using less stuff across the board. It's not just using less plastic, it's using less of everything.